And to understand more about superbugs, or in medical term as microbe, and the possibility of them in right here in Indonesia, today in the studio we have MMC Hospital Pediatrician, Dr. Andrew Renato Nafarin. Good morning, Doc. Thank you so much for being here with us again. again. It's great to see you. Um, so, you know, first comes first, uh, superbugs. The yes. possibility of, you know, being here, or it's already actually here, superbugs or yes. microbes in Indonesia. Uh, actually, superbugs are uh, microbiotic that resistant to uh, almost all antibiotics. It's uh, already a common occurrence in hospital. Actually, okay. it's not that new, but uh, it's already uh, publicly known. It's better because uh, when I uh, got the, my shift at the ICU for babies, neonatal ICU, mm -hmm. uh, most of the culture of yeah. the culture is. Uh, growing the bacteria and testing which antibiotics uh, it's uh, it's uh, it can be treated mm -hmm. almost uh, it's not that 10 percent it's less than five percent that is effective most oh of it gosh. shows re uh, resistance to the antibiotics so okay. it's already a problem actually not just uh, recently but actually since the beginning of antibiotics the next problem was the resistance. Right. Okay, yeah. um, is this why, I guess, uh, you know, medicines continue to have to evolve and change all the time, right? Uh, yes, but uh, the current problem is the uh, evolve of antibiotics is slower than the evolve of right. bacteria or the virus. Right. We, we mentioned in the, uh, the previous uh, story there that where um, there was actually a lot of antibiotic misuse throughout the pandemic. Why was that? I mean, was this related in any uh, way to COVID-19? Because for COVID-19, there were some treatments for symptoms, but mostly we were focused on the vaccine. Okay, so the misuse of antibiotics is uh, actually quite common because uh, first, we, if we want to know which antibiotics is needed, first we must uh, find if the patient is infected by virus, by bacteria, or by fungi. And okay. sometimes the patient doesn't want to get checked with the laboratory yeah. checking, and they want immediate treatment, and they, some of the patient that just feel that like uh, they didn't get treatment if they don't get antibiotics. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's why uh, the misuse of antibiotics is common, not just in India, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. So when you say mm -hmm. proper test, it means like a blood test. We yes. need to get a blood test to know exactly what it is that's but, wrong. But uh, not exactly. Uh, all patients need the blood test. Okay. Uh, but it helps sharpen our diagnosis, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. The problem is uh, the most uh, common uh, guidelines for doctors if the uh, fever doesn't go down in a yes. few days, we give the antibiotics. Yes, Correct. that's Correct. true. The problem is some virus also has the same symptoms. Yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It's, hard to... it's very what? tricky uh, to be a doctor because most of it is an educated guess. If all you're yes. given is a set of yes. symptoms and yeah. they're similar, they overlap, right. you have to try to pick which one is the yeah. most correct. Yes. Right? Yeah. One time I got a patient, uh, he said the hobby was eating antibiotics once, once the, uh, only once if he, he feel like it. I mean, mm -hmm. the body is not uh, healthy enough. Right. He took one antibiotic after yeah. that it finished. Oh no. Well, that's not <laughs> how they work. Antibiotics, yeah. you need to finish it, right? Yeah. If you start, all the doses you need to and whatnot. Or actually, don't start at all. Actually, no, I was start. like him, by the way, Doc, because <laughs> really? when I was a little, I have a tonsils problem, by okay. the way. So every month, every, if I eat ice cream, I'm too tired, whatever, I always get my, my tonsils would uh, have inflammations, right? Yeah. So then I would get fever and whatnot. So, and then every month I remember that I need to get the antibiotics. So mentally, I'm thinking if I don't get, whenever the FM already dropped, Dropping, if I don't get the antibiotics, then I'm just gonna go drop down. Yeah. You know, that's why like I need the antibiotics. Mentally, I would think that way. But uh, again, this is something that I want to cut the chain with my mm. children uh, because I think one of my children is also the same with me, like with somewhat with the tonsils. Um, how would you say to a parent like me that is very dangerous if you overdose your children with antibiotics or you know make a use of a habit of you need to take antibiotics? So uh, actually, antibiotic is not a godly medicine. First of all, it's mm -hmm. a medicine with a lot of side effects, and if misused, it causes resistance. That means the later bacteria cannot be treated with any more of antibiotics. Yeah, that's the first uh, thing we need to understand. I mean. Maybe uh, the antibiotic is good now, but the cure and antibiotic, if we see the history, it was founded maybe 20 or 30 years ago. Okay. It's, it's about time that uh, a lot of bacteria got resistant with that. Yeah. So that means if it's not necessary, don't give it. How do we know? Yeah, check, uh, ask a doctor. And that's the second problem. Mm -hmm. Not all doctors, uh, uh, they can give the antibiotics uh, properly. I mean, yeah. because some will, uh, will say, Oh, and it's maybe because of the patient. If the patient doesn't get any medicine, 
Yes. They don't feel like three. So that's uh, right. the other factor. So it's not simple. It's a lot yeah. of factors. What would be the side effect you say if like you're you're, you're overdosed by antibiotics okay, in for, the future? Uh, let's say uh, because uh, the the term misuse is is too early or too long using mm -hmm. antibiotics. Okay. Yeah. And the overdose is using a single uh, antibiotic with a dose much higher than necessary. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. Because uh, if the higher the dose, usually the uh, the side effect will come like allergic, like uh, oh, okay. kidney problem or liver problems. Right. Yeah, it could happen. But uh, the most dangerous is uh, at least the bacteria got killed with the overdose, right? Well, that's right. True, the silver it, yeah. It's not good if also the patient got damaged. Also. So that's not a solution, not right? Yeah, you're you're yeah. killing the bacteria, but you got another problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the misuse is more dangerous because in mm -hmm. the long term, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, it can cause bacteria resistant. We it leaves us less protected in the end, yes. right? Overall, because yeah. the history of antibiotics, yeah, since the founding, it increased our lifespan by 20, 20 years or more. Okay. Just imagine if uh, no more antibiotic is working, our lifespan get decreased faster than that. No, doc, that's not what <laughs> we want. Yeah. So uh, this, so you brought up a good point in regards to children. So are children more susceptible to this because? They, uh, if they get treated at a younger age with mm -hmm. antibiotics, they'll build up the resistance a lot sooner than somebody who took less antibiotics. The bacteria get, uh, res get resistant uh, with the antibiotic, not the children, but actually. Mm. Right, okay, correct. So, uh, yeah, the, of course, uh, every newer generation will uh, will get will feel the impact more than the previous generation, right? right yeah. I mean, in 1960 or 70, it was easier to treat uh, the treatment because yeah. it was, like they said, the golden age of yeah. antibiotics. Mm -hmm. But right. now, if you see the uh, development of antibiotics, uh, the history of a lot of pharmaceutical companies, they right. pour a lot of fun, they still cannot find the new antibiotics. So, yeah. th so right now, the, in, reg uh, in regards to this particular uh, uh, anti or excuse me, superbugs yeah. or the microbes, the CDC itself has reported that there are 18 particular bacteria and fungi that endanger human health. So, what are some of the ones that we should be looking out for here as parents, especially for children? Okay, so. Uh, the common term for medical pro uh, professionals is IMR, uh, antimicrobial resistance, mm -hmm. uh, as in CDC. The 18, uh, mostly, uh, it's the bacteria that is found in the hospital, what, what we call hospital-associated infections, mm -hmm. which is more resistant than a la normal bacteria outside. So it's a good news for today, for uh, for now, yeah. Right. But uh, the it's not just bacteria. The, the virus, like say the treatment for HIV. Uh, yeah. Uh, nowadays, the, the, the HIV virus can get more resistance. Mm. And secondly, the common in Indonesia, which is <coughs> maybe the second or the third in the world, is tuberculosis. Oh, TBC. Yeah. Mm. That's why the treatment uh, for tuberculosis is six months or 12 months. Correct, uh, yes. If you get any less than that, sometimes the bacteria develop resistance. Is and that why it takes so long to recover from tuberculosis? Because yeah. I've heard it takes a long time, right? Uh, six to 12 just, months, yeah. Uh, the six and twelve month is be, uh, basically because of the trait of the tuberculosis oh, itself. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first two months, yeah, the most uh, tuberculosis got killed, but the dormant one doesn't get killed, and it takes a long time uh, for the dormant to show up. Maybe up to right. twelve months. That's so it why just sits right. there and then waits. Yeah. That's why after two months, uh, most people will feel better and they try to stop it. But it's not good because the more resistant tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't get treated easily. It, I mean, if you uh, treat with, with the second line treatment, yeah. it doesn't recover as good as the first line treatment. Right. Uh, it most it's more expensive. Mm. It's more painful because in, uh, injection involved. <laughs> so. Oh. Mm -hmm. Finish your treatment. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the lesson uh, learned. You know, sometimes lesson. it's not just that, it's just people get tired of it, right? Like, oh my God. They, they, they feel better, so it's the key. Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm okay now. Right. Yeah, You're yeah. Just feeling a little bit better. Um, so, you know, the superbugs infections treated, like in the TBC, it's, it's varies then, yeah, Doc, that what kind of superbugs that you got are infected, right? Yeah, so uh, for people that, like for outpatient, for healthy uh, people that goes come, come and out, uh, go home from hospital, for one day treatment, they rarely got that. But okay. for patient that stays longer in the ICU, in the uh, right. neonatal ICU, mm. it's uh, basically they are uh, in a lower uh, immunity system because they already yeah. sick sure. and they got a more severe infection. So High that's risk, why, yeah. yeah, if people get sick, admitted to ICU, yeah, we need to outweigh the risk and benefit because 
getting in uh, admit to ICU means you are exposed to more dangerous bacteria. Yeah. Mm. That was what I went when I, w I went right. through uh, rubella. A couple of points that I re can relate to. For one, I felt better within like three days, and I still had a bag of medicine. But I remember my doctor said, yeah. "You got to finish that like twice a day until it's all gone." And then right. I, I remember thinking, "Is this even necessary?" You doubt yourself, right? right? And yeah. secondly, that whole exposure thing. When I had that particular, uh, um, it had it came with fever, so I was admitted to the COVID ward, mm -hmm. and then I said, "Doc, do I need to like stay?" overnight and he said well you stay overnight you're gonna be here in the COVID ward and you don't have yeah. COVID so it's up to you and I was like "Ooh, maybe yeah. not because then yeah you have to weigh the risks and the, mm -hmm. as well so back to these uh, these super bugs how do how do we deal with this problem that antibiotics are now getting I guess less strong in fighting these all of these uh, bacteria and viruses especially in the future as they can as these viruses these super bugs continue to get more resistant okay it's like uh, uh, in the CDC they advise like First, uh, reduce the infection by healthy lifestyle, sanitation, okay. uh, good washing hygiene. Yes. Uh, secondly, get uh, reduced by other uh, prevention, like maybe vaccination. Yes. Okay. The third one, using the antimicrobes accordingly. Yeah, that means uh, we need to increase our uh, knowledge as a doctor. We talk with a lot mm -hmm. of uh, specialists. We do a discussion. We yes. and then. Uh, decide which treatment is best for this patient. Right. So that's why the treatment for, let's say, tonsillitis is mm -hmm. uh, is renewed every few years. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that those days they were like thing. saying no because you need it because you know it protects you from all the bacteria yeah. and whatnot. But now when they're like, oh, you're almost 40, you're still got it. I think you should you take it. Rid of it. I'm like, yeah. well, I should have got it like 30 years ago, Doc. Change, yeah. I know, and you know, I, like I said, I you got used into antibiotics and whatnot. But again, like we said, that we don't want to do this. But of course, there are some cases where we need to give our children antibiotics. Yes. So what's the right way to, for us as parents to give you know antibiotics? The right way to our children, of course, going to pediatricians and go to the doctors and what is the right dosage and how to really uh, you know uh, finish it all doc i mean like you were saying if you got yes. it then you have to finish them all until it's, it's i think done. one of the key points of uh, the education of the parents right? mm -hmm. that, so that's why uh, i'm not against the parents uh, they are looking for new information mm -hmm. but sometimes the new information if unsorted uh, they will cause the fear in the patient they don't want to take the, any more antibiotics we don't want that too yeah right yeah. we just want uh, the Let's say for the virus infection that can be treated with antivirus, we give the antivirus. If Correct. it cannot be treated by any antivirus, just let the antibody works. If it's bacteria and the body cannot handle it, mm -hmm. we give the antibiotics and we need to finish it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, I just also want to ask, since you're also here as a pediatrician, mm -hmm. sorry, like, for still time, no, <laughs> no this problem. is just for all of us, too. <laughs> yeah. um, there are so many now viruses and bacteria, and, you know, they're now with the medicines and whatnot. How many days do you think, I mean, when we go to pediatrician, they said when you your kids have fever, wait for, like, uh, uh, three times 24, uh, 24 hours. Yes. Is that correct, Doc? Like, uh, what kind of other symptoms that we should kind of, like, be precautious of our children? Uh, if we are talking just about the fever, yes, yes. around three days is like a uh, common cutoff, yeah, but okay. not always, yeah, common yeah. cutoff for between uh, normal bacteria and normal virus. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other danger sign or warning sign for children who is sick that needs immediate treatment, not just fever, could be like uh, feeling weak or okay. cannot drink, cannot eat at all, yes. or uh, step or seizures. Right. Uh, uh, maybe. That's the most common warning signs, yeah. Okay. Or All vomiting right. or diarrhea. I mean, not if it's just fever, it's easier. Yeah, yeah. you can wait for but then 30, if three it days. If comes with other symptoms, mm -hmm. sometimes it's less than three yeah. days. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you have to just see the condition. Yeah, of the person and you have to like catch up with the time, right? Yeah. Like you want to put your, you know, kids go to the doctor or emergency right. room as soon as possible. They have problems eating, drinking, right. all those things play in a big right. factor. Doc, yeah. thank you so much for uh, for your insight into this matter. This is concerning always as parents to have these new things that <laughs> yes. we need to know about. But we do uh, one thing uh, we need to do is to stay updated, like Doc said. Right. Um, don't just remember things we did 30 years yes. ago. Yes. Yes. And trust the doctors. Yeah. You know, sometimes parents think that we're much more smarter than the doctors. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs>